All right. <clears throat> so last week we did points on planes in AutoCAD, kind of seeing where they were. Now we're going to do it in Inventor. I've got three points that I've made up into a plane. And this thing here is a 3D mouse. So make sure the cord's pointing away from you. If you want to use it, you can. And then you can just use this to turn it, rotate it, push it in and out, zoom, push it side to side, up and down to pan. If you want to, it goes in your left hand. If you don't want to use that, um, if you hold all, F6 will take you back to normal. And then if you press F4, and here you can rotate your view. If you click up here, it'll go only up and down. Here, it'll go only side to side. Out here, it'll go only that way. If you want to get back to the F6, it takes you back to the isometric. Okay? So, F4, you get to this, and you can move it around. F6 takes you back to normal. Okay? So I have three points that I've made a plane with. And so I have these planes, and these planes here are my XZ plane, my, or my YZ plane, my XZ plane, and my XY plane. And I can see my, down here where my planes are. It shows me which direction my axes are pointing. <clears throat> so two axes can make a plane. And so we have those three planes. And I've just turned them on so we can see them. I also have this plane that's on the incline through my three points. Okay? And so what we're going to be doing, if you look right here, I've got a little, little notebook thing, a little yellow thing. If you put your mouse over it, it tells you the instructions for the lab. <clears throat> and so what we're going to do is we're going to find a point 2.5 inches above the XZ. So the XZ was that one. So we're going to come up 2.5 inches. And, and two inches in front of the XY. So the XY is here. And front, if we look at the little cube here, it, it has labeled front, back, right, back, left, top, and bottom. So I use those same terms. So if we want to go to the front, we're coming this way out from it, okay? Behind would be more towards the back, <clears throat> using the orientation that the, cube, the, the, that the cube gives us. Okay. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to need to make new planes that those this is the way, and then make find a point where all three of those planes touch. Right. So we have our plane here. We'll bring that plane up, and then we'll, we have a line where those two planes intersect, and then we can have a point where the third point hits. Does that make sense? So like right now, I can go here and I can go axis. Now if I picked this bottom in there, that's, an, that's the axis of where those two planes touch right now. See right where those two planes touch? They made an axis. But in order to find a point, you have to have three planes touch. So, I'm going to come here to plane, just click on that, and so now to get a plane a certain distance away from another plane, I'm just going to click on it and drag it up. So click and hold down and drag it up. And then you can let go, and it knows that you're wanting to offset it, so I can say 2.5. Okay. So now that plane is 2.5 inches up from the bottom. Now I wanted it two inches in front of the XY. So I'll go to plane, click here and drag it out, two. 
the button. So there's my two new planes. One plane here, one plane there. Does that make sense? So if I want to offset it a certain distance, I just click on it and drag it out and tell it how far to go. So now what do you think we're going to do to get a point? Because it's on this plane. So I said, um, oh, I didn't say it, but it's, it's on that plane that I want. So I'm just going to go point. I'm going to click on this plane, click on that plane, and click on that plane. See, now it gave me a point right here. So let's turn off those first three. I'm just going to click on it, hold shift, right click, visibly off. So those are my three new planes that I made. So that point is where all three of those planes intersect. So that's where those two planes would cross, right? So here's where those two planes cross, and then it just brings it out where they hit that third point. So that's where that, that point is. And so then the next question is, how far is that from the origin? So why might we want to know this? Or any of this? What use would this be? Yeah, if you're doing something and you want to find where that thing is. Maybe you're going to use it to help make something else later or as a part of another sketch or something um, in a more complex object. Or let's say you're working somewhere and you have a sloped wall or something and you need to find where a point's going to be where another pipe's going to go through it or something like that. <clears throat> so you know it's going to be out this far and down this far. So you want to find where that point is. Uh, so that's what this is. <clears throat> now we want to measure back to that origin to see how far, how far to come. So you're gonna, you need to go to tools and distance, or just type M. M is the measure tool, or you can come tools distance, and we're gonna pick on that point, and then we're gonna come over here and click on the center point. So now it gives us our x, y, and z axis from that point. Okay. Measuring from that center point back in here where those the, those three primary axes or primary planes crossed up to our new point. Okay. Questions? So that's basically how, what one, two, and three are. So each new one is just one uh, that's the open. Yeah. On four. Oh, I guess on one and two. On three. <coughs> now I've labeled one of the corners, one of the points. So now I have a point that I've labeled A. And on this one, we're going to do, and you can see A is behind that main plane. <clears throat> so we want a point that's half an inch below point A. So I know that I want it to be half an inch below point A. And one inch in front of the x, y. So before we had a plane that we could copy up. Do I have anything that point A that I can copy down yet? The plane that point A is on. But that's at an incline. So if I copy that, it would be perpendicular or parallel to that that existing plane. So if I grabbed 
this plane, it's going to measure out and it's perpendicular to it to make it a parallel plane. But what I could do is, I know I want it to be parallel with this one, my new plane, and I can come up and pick on point A. So now I've got a new plane up that's through point A. Now I can copy this one down. Okay? So then, so that, that's three, four is two points. You're going down from one point into the, the side from the other point. And five is a little bit, it's the same kind of thing. But now what we're doing is we're finding a point that's not on the plane. This is kind of get ready for next week. So now we're going to find the point that's not on this plane, but has relationships to those to it. So we want to find a point that's two inches above x, y, 0.5 to the right of the z, y, and one inch in front of this plane. So it's parallel to that plane. Yeah. It, it's on a plane that's parallel to this, one inch in front of it. But it's not on this one. So we know how to, to go down. We know how to go over and to, the, and to the side from the main planks. But how do I find a point that's one inch in front of that one? Not offset from it, but one inch in front of it. straight on that plane. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, if I copy this one out to any of those points, yeah, yeah, then I come forward, one, and then I can help that to create it. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I can't just copy this one because if I did that, it'd be up here, not that direction. So. Construction to find a point in front of it, right? Also, one one easy way I can do it. Um, actually, an, an easiest the easiest way would be to create a sketch, and so actually just draw it here and measure one inch from one of those and make a new plane through that point. So what I'm going to do is just go over here to create a sketch. I'm just going to create a sketch. I want to sketch maybe on that plane. Just sketch on the on that, um, that that YZ plane. And so now you can see I have a grid going that direction. So if I want to be able to see where these points are on that plane, I can go right here to project geometry. What this is going to do is take that point and try and translate it back to our plane that we're sketching on. If I did project geometry and pick on that point, and you can't really see it, but right here, that's where it is. So if I looked at it from the side, see how those two points kind of line up on each other? If I looked at it straight on, see when I rotate, they kind of come off center. So that took that point and projected it all the way back to the current plane that I'm drawing on. And so now, I can just make a line from there, go out to the side. And on this line, as I drew it, I wanted to make sure I did that. So you look at the symbol right here. That means that it's a horizontal line. And it says vertical because of the, the plane I'm on. But that means it's locking in like that. It's not going to be able to change the angle. I'm going to click there. And then how far did I want to go? One inch. So go to dimension, click on that, tell it one. And see it shortened the line back to that dimension. So kind of opposite of AutoCAD. AutoCAD, you draw it exact. 
and the dimension that says whatever it is. In Inventor, you draw it kind of rough, and you use the dimension to shorten it or lengthen it to the right size. So now I can finish it. So I know that point is one inch in front of that, right? So if I did a plane parallel to that, through that point, I know that plane is now one inch in front of that. Does that make sense? So now I can copy this one over, that one up, or whatever, right? To, to find my new point. So that point is going to be in front of my my first point. Does that make sense? Oh. So what do I do? I create a new sketch on this back that's vertical. Uh -huh. I projected the point from the 3D space back onto my sketch plane, and then I drew a line that's one inch long. And I just made a new plane parallel to it through that point. Okay. Questions? So you only you only projected that one point. Yeah, percent. just that one point. Just so I can measure from that point. Yeah. Okay, questions? All right. Um, so that's lecture for today. Um, next week we're going to be doing um,